Shalom, this is Levi Shore. Welcome back to Sweet Good Torah. So there's many that cry out around the world that uh, somehow the land of Israel is being occupied. So it's interesting, since we're now in Parsha Breshis, we're in the very first uh, Parsha, the Torah portion, Genesis. And uh, the very first Rashi on the, the Torah, he actually answers this question. So it begins, he, so he's commenting on the first Pasuk in the Torah, the first verse, that says, Breshis bara elokim, es hashamayim ve es ha'aretz. And it says that Elohim, an aspect of, of Hashem, this infinite being, this infinite creator, that he created the heavens and the earth. And Rashi is going to comment on this. And he says, he brings, he says, Amar Rebbe Yitzhak. He says, Rebbe Yitzhak says, Lo esa Torah ela He said, really, the Torah only really needs to start with Hachodesh Hazeh meaning that's the first mitzvah that was given to the Jewish people. And he, and he goes on and he says, Shehi mitzvah rishona shenitz, shenitz tavu by Yisrael. That this is the first mitzvah that was commanded to Yisrael, to Israel, to the Jewish people. Uma ta'am pesach babreshis. And he asks this amazing question. Why does the Torah start with Misa Breshis? Why does it start with telling how Hashem created everything. You know, why does it go through this whole detail of the seven days, you know, of how Hashem created everything? So it says, Mashum koach ma'asav, higidli amo, laseis lechem nachalas goyim. And his answer is very interesting. He says, because of the power of his actions, the power of Hashem's actions to create everything that exists, the power to create suns and planets and galaxies and every form of life on, on the earth, the power to create all this, he he the, the, the power of his actions, it tells something to his people. And it's that's this power, lahem nachalas goyim, that Hashem has the power to give the Jewish people the inheritance of the nations. And what is the inheritance of the nations? So that's going to be Eretz Yisrael. That's the land of Israel. So it says, She'im yomru umus ha'olam Yisrael, least him atem. So it says that if... If the nations of the world, they come and they tell Israel, and they say, you are, you are thieves. You are least him. You are thieves. Shekivashtam, excuse me, Shekivashtam, Artso Shivas Goyim, that you have conquered the lands of the seven nations. So what does that mean exactly? So there was the seven original Kanani nations. There was the seven Canaanite nations that were there before Avraham Avinu, before Abraham came into the land of Israel. And the nations may accuse us of conquering the land from them, that it really should belong to the, the Canaanites, the Canaanites. And it's interesting, we see this exact parallel in the world we live in now, that there's seven Arab terrorist groups that operate in the land of Israel, just as in the ancient world, there was these seven Canaanite nations. And I don't think it's a coincidence. I think there's a spiritual parallel between, you know, the the ancient seven nations and these modern seven nations. So, Hem Omrim Lehem, and this is the answer. So it says, if the nations come to you and say, you stole the land from the seven nations, you're occupying this land, you know, they call Palestine, and it doesn't belong to you, this is what you should answer. It says, Hem Omrim Lehem, this is what you should answer them. Koha Ares Shel Akadosh Baruch says that all the world, it belongs to the Holy One, blessed be He. He vera, he unisana la'asher yasher beina. That He created it. Hashem created it, and He gives it to whoever is upright in His eyes. so no nisana lechem, and it's His will that He gives it to them. so no natala mehem, and it's His will He takes it from them. Unisana lanu, and He gives it to us. And this is the simple answer. This is the very first thing the Torah is teaching us. The world belongs to Hashem. And what Hashem wants for mankind, He wants us to learn the Torah. He wants us to do the mitzvot. Why? Because it helps elevate us. It helps make us better people. It elevates us spiritually. It improves our relationships with each other. It makes us kinder to each other. And it brings us closer in our relationship to Hashem. And if we do it well, if we learn the Torah well, and we follow the mitzvahs, and we elevate ourselves as a nation, we can reach that spiritual height again, where Hashem puts His Shekhinah, 
he puts this, this manifestation of this infinite being and he puts it on top of the Aron Kodesh, on top of the, the Ark of the Covenant in this cloud. And the, the brilliance of the, the, of the presence of Hashem living within, you know, within, you know, <laughs> on top of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and Jerusalem and living within the whole Jewish people. And then it will be a world where we can finally have shalom, we can have peace, because we can finally see that all the nations were created by one infinite being. And we can finally achieve the purpose of the world, you know, and it's not these atrocities and this war and this killing and in this holy land, it will never, it will never be acquired by violence and atrocity, but it will be acquired through, through learning Hashem's Torah, fulfilling Hashem's will, following what Hashem says is his vision for the world, the world that he created. Oh, I, may we see better days soon. May we see a Yeshua rescue of the hostages that are being held in Gaza. And may we see a defeat of evil in the world so we can finally get to that, that shalom, that, that peace that the whole world craves. I hope to see you again on Sweet and Good Torah. Uh, all the best.